this is the chapter 13 test review for fourth grade. For numbers 1a through 1e, select yes or no to indicate if a rectangle with the given dimensions would have a perimeter of 50. So when we're doing perimeter, we're adding the length and the width and then multiplying by 2. So this one I have 25 plus 2 is 27. And I know that these would have to add up to 25 because 50 divided by 2 gives me 25. So if my length and my width, when I add them together one time is more than 25, it would not have a perimeter of 50. 20 plus 25, or sorry, 20 plus 5 equals 25. And 25 times 2 equals 50, so yes, that would work. 17 plus 8 equals 25, and I know if it adds up to 25, it would work. 15 plus 5 is 20, so that would not work because 20 times 2 is only 40. 15 plus 10 is 25, so I know that would work. 25 times 2 is 50. All right, the next one, swimming. The swimming club's indoor pool is in a rectangular building. Marco is laying tile around the rectangular pool. So really, we're trying to find the area of this gray part. What is the area of the pool and the area of the walkway? Well, the pool, I would do 16 times 20. 16 times 2 is 32, so that would be 320 square meters. And the walkway is 26 by 22, so 26 times 22, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, draw my collar, lay an egg, so then we have 0, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5, when we add those together, I get 572 572 square meters for the walkway for the whole thing. Now, how many square meters of tile will Marco need for the walkway? Well, just for the walkway alone, I'm going to do 572 minus 320. And that gives me 252 square meters. So make sure when you are doing this that you do every little part. simple mistakes. Okay, question three says that we are matching the dimensions of the rectangle in the top row with the correct area or perimeter in the bottom row. So I've got to check both. So if I add these together, 5 plus 9 equals 14. And if I multiply that by 2, the perimeter would be 28. 28 is not one of my options. So if I do the area, that would be 9 times 5 is 45, and that's the area. So I can see that this one does match. So I'm just going to draw my line right over that one. Okay, doing area 6 times 6 is 36. I do have 6 times 6 is 36, so I can match that up. 6 times 5 is 30. That is not my area. And I can see that all I have left is perimeter. So if I add them, 6 plus 5 is 11. And when I multiply that by 2, I get 22. There's my match. 9 plus 6 equals 15 times 2 is 30. Okay, next question. Kylie put a large rectangular sticker on her notebook. The height of the sticker measures 18. So I'm going to go ahead and draw... I find with area, it is really easy to draw the picture and keep everything organized. So the height is 18. The base is half as long as the height. So half of the height means I'm going to do 18 divided by 2, and that is 9. Now it says, what is the area? Well, now I know my second dimension, so I can do 18 times 9. 9 times 8 is 72. 9 times 1 is 9. 
plus 7 is 16. So that means we have an area of 162 square centimeters. Okay, next question. A rectangular flower garden in Samantha's backyard has 100 feet around its edge. The edge gives us a clue that that's perimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my rectangular flower garden. The width of the garden is 20 feet. What is the length? So I don't know what the length is yet. But I know if this is 20, then this one has to be 20 because opposite sides are equal in a rectangle. I know that if it says that around the entire edge is 100, that means 100 is the perimeter. So I'm going to replace the P with 100 because I know the value. 2 times the length, well I still don't know the length, but I know the width and the width is 20. So I can say in my perimeter um, formula, 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, well 2 times 20 is 40. I'm just going to carry down this 100 because I'm not using it yet. So then I have 100 equals 2 times the length plus 40. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 40 and that gives me 60 is or equals 2 times the length. So to find that I'm going to do 60 divided by 2 which is 30. So my length of this rectangle is 30. Now I can double check this by doing, if this is 30, 30 plus 20, is, or yeah, 30 plus 20 is 50, and 50 times 2 equals 100, so yes, it does work. Number 6, Gary drew a rectangle with a perimeter of 20. Okay, so the perimeter all the way around is 20. He tried to draw a square with a perimeter of 20. Is there an option? Well, I need to see about if there's anything I can add up to make 20. And remember, the perimeter is 2 of the length and the width, so really my sides need to add up to 10. So I could do 6 and 4. I could do... 2 and 8. I could do, these are all combinations that make 10. 9 and 1. I could do 3 plus 7 makes 10. So I have 1 plus 9, 2 plus 8, 3 plus 7, 4 plus 6. And then one more I could do is 5 and 5 make 10 and I know that if the sides the length and the width are the same then that is a square so these are all the different combinations that would equal a perimeter of 20 and I know that because 7 plus 3 is 10 and if I multiply that by 2 I get 20 9 plus 1 is 10 times 2 is 20 6 plus 4 is 10 times 2 is 20 2 times 8 is 10 times 2 is 20 and 5 times 5 is 10 times 2 is 20 so those are all the different combinations that we could make a rectangle that has a perimeter of 20. Okay, next question. Amy and Bert are drawing plants for rectangular vegetable gardens. In Amy's plan, the garden is 13 by 10. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw Amy's garden. So hers is 13 feet by 10 feet. And this is Amy, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I label my drawing so I know whose is whose. In Bert's garden, the garden is 12 feet by 12 feet. And I should have drawn this more as a square since my sides are equal, but that's why we just label things. Now we need to use this information to answer questions 7a through 7d. So 7a says the square, the area of Amy's garden is 130 square feet. Well, I know that I do my length times my width. 13 times 10 is 130. And my label is square feet. Yes, that is true. The area of Bert's garden is 48. To do Bert's garden, I'm going to do the side times the side, which is 144. Now, Bert made a very common mistake. When he has, when you have a square, it's very easy to just think we're doing 12 times 4. 
but 12 times 4 is actually going to find us the perimeter because we're doing 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. So multiplying by 4 would not get us the area, that would get us the perimeter. So that one is false. Amy's garden has a greater area than Bert's garden. Well, since we solved both of these, we can easily see that that is false because Bert's area is larger. And the area of Bert's garden is 14 square feet greater than Amy's. Well, if I take Bert's garden and I subtract Amy's garden, that leaves me with 14 square feet. So yes, that is true. Number eight, a farmer planted corn in a square field. Okay, so I'm drawing my square field and that's, we're gonna pretend that's a square. One side is 32. Well, in a square, since it tells us this is a square, we know that all the sides are equal. Now it says, what is the area of the cornfield? So area is side times side, or base times height. Two times two is four, two times three is six. Add my zero, two times three is six, three times three is nine. When I add those together, I get 1,024 square yards. All right, next question. Harvey bought a frame in which he put his family picture. So here's the frame in the picture. What is the area of the frame? Which means we don't want the area of the entire thing. We want just the gray part. So we're gonna first find the area of the entire square, the bigger area, which is 22 times 16. Six times two is 12. Six times two is 12 plus one is 13. Add my zero. Two times one is two. One times two is two. Add those together and I get 352. So that's for the total. And then if I find the area of my picture, 18 by 12, two times eight is 16. Two times one is two plus one is three. Add my zero, one times eight is eight. One times one is one. When I add those together, eight plus three, 11. I get 216. And I wanna know just the frame, so I'm going to subtract my 216 from my 352. And I have to borrow, 12 minus six is six, four minus one is three, three minus two is one. So that means the area of the frame is 136 square inches. Okay, next question. Kelly has 236 feet of fence, oh, fence, we know fence is perimeter, to use to enclose a rectangular space for her dog. She wants the width to be 23. So that this is 23 feet. And then this would be 23 feet. Draw a rectangle that could be the space for Kelly's dog. Label the length and the width. Well, I know we have 236 equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, which we know is 23. So I'm gonna do two times 23 is 46. I'm gonna subtract 46. Nine, one minus, so that's 190. And then I know that I'm going to subtract, or sorry, divide this by two. So 190 divided by two. The reason I do that is because that's gonna give me the other side. So two goes into 19 nine times with 18, I have one left over, two goes into 10, five. So that means that my width is going to be nine, or my length is 95 feet. All right, next question. The diagram, sorry, we just had a power outage, so I've got a little bit of static in the background, I apologize. The diagram shows the dimensions of a new parking lot at Helen's Health Food Store. So this is my diagram. Now when I have a combined figure like this, I either need to cut the rectangle into more than one rectangle or make the big rectangle and take out the little pieces. So I find it easier just to cut this. And now I'm gonna figure out if I know enough information to be able to solve this. Well, the base of this one looks like it's 40 times my height of this rectangle is 20. And on this one, I know that this piece is 30 times, oh, this height is 10. So to find the area, I'm going to do 40 times 20, 
4 times 2 is 8 with two zeros because we're in the 10 times 10. So that's 800 square yards. And then 30 times 10 is 300 square yards. 800 plus 300, when I add those together, 8 plus 3 is 11. And we have 100, so 1,100 square yards. All right, next question, number 12. Chad's bedroom floor is 12 feet long and 10 feet wide. So here's his bedroom floor. 12 feet long by 10 feet wide. He has an area rug on the floor that is 7 feet long and 5 feet wide. Which statement tells how to find the amount of floor that is not covered by the rug? So really we want this area. Okay, so before I look at these, I'm going to go ahead and do what I sh know I should do. So to find the area of the rug, 7 times 5 is 35. Let me just get rid of this static. To find the area of the entire room, I do 12 times 10, which is 120. Now I know in order to find the area that I need, I would do 120 subtract 35. And when I do that, I get 85. Now, Let's go through the options. Would I add 12 times 10 and 7 times 5? No, I would not add them because I want to subtract because I don't want to include that area. So I would subtract. So that one is wrong. I would subtract 35 from 12 times 10. Well, 12 times 10 is the big area. 35 was the total area. So yes, I would subtract that amount. C. 10 times 5 and 12 times 7, well, that is wrong because the measurements are mixed up. 7 and 5 are the dimensions of the rug, and 12 and 10 are the dimensions of the floor. Adding all these together wouldn't get me anything. I would add if I was doing perimeter, but those are not the four sides of the rectangle, so we know that one is also wrong. Subtract 7 times 5 from 12 times 10. Yes, I would take the smaller number away from the bigger area. Subtract 12 times 10 from 7 times 5. That is wrong because you cannot take a bigger number away from a smaller number. That is saying this. That is saying that I have 35 and I'm going to subtract 120 from that. And we cannot take a bigger number from a smaller number. Okay, a row of plaques covers 120 square feet along a wall. If the plaques are three feet tall, what is the length of the wall? So here's my area of my wall that is for plaques. The whole thing is 120 square feet, and that tells me since it covers it, then that's the area. So to find this missing number, the length, I'm going to do 120 divided by three. Three doesn't go into one, but it goes into 12 four times bring down my zero, three goes into zero, zero times, which means my length is 40 feet. Okay, next question number 14. Mrs. Bennett wants to buy carpeting for her living room and her dining room. So she wants to carpet everything. Explain how she can find the amount of carpet she needs to cover the floor in both rooms, then find the amount. So I can find the area of the dining room and the area of the living room and add them. So there's my explanation. So to find my area of my living room, my base is um, 20, my height is 20, so 20 times 20, 2 times 2 is 4, so this is 400. The height of this room is 15. Now, this I don't know. I know the entire thing is 30, but if this piece is 20, I know this because this side is 20, then 20 plus what makes 30? That would leave me with 10. So 15 times 10 is 150. And then I'm just going to add them 400 
plus 150 is 